Hi! In this e-learning course, I'll go through some configuration settings for PaperStream Capture Pro. I'll work with the administrator tool a bit, but most of this course will be about making a new document profile. The starting assumption is that you have already successfully installed Capture Pro in a single station installation and could now benefit from a little advice on how to make a good setup. So I'll show you some good stuff on how to scan paper and store the files you create in a useful way. And I'll get started on that right now. Before I get rolling, let me show you where we're going. I'm about to configure some things that will allow me to scan some paper, some invoices, then separate documents with a right click, and then index those documents by entering the invoice number and the vendor name. And by the way, I'll show you how to make that drop down menu. It's easy. Those metadata entries will be used by Capture Pro to name files and folders and the software will automatically put the files in the right folder, leaving everything nicely organized by vendor name. And those files will be searchable PDFs. That's where we're going. I would like for you to keep in mind as we go along that working with invoices like this is just one example. The important thing is how you do it in PaperStream Capture Pro. You might be interested in HR or medical documents instead, but the methods for how you work with the documents will be the same either way. I'll get on with it. I'll start Capture Pro, and this is the default installation. I haven't changed anything. These are document profiles. A profile is a collection of scan settings. You scan paper by running a document profile. I like to bring out the document profile summary using this little arrow on the right, but that's not required. Okay, before I do any scanning, I want to use the administrator tool to set a few things. I'll drop down this menu up here for administrator tool. During installation, I selected evaluation mode to run Capture Pro without a license. So first, I'll license this software on the Activation tab. I'll click Activate and enter the license code I received by email. And there's my success message. Moving right along, I'll go to the Usability tab and set Click Mode to Double which means I'll have to double-click a document profile to initiate a scan. I recommend this because it means you'll have seen the last of this message caused by just selecting a document profile when there's no paper in the scanner. And a little more. On the Station tab, notice that Scan and Index is selected. That's the way it was set when I showed you where we were going a minute ago. I really like working in that setting, and it's how I'll use the software during this video and it is the default in a new installation of Capture Pro. It's a very easy way to work with a single station installation. I recommend it. But perhaps you did an upgrade installation from an earlier version of Capture Pro and you're seeing this setting because it held over. It's a way where scan and index are separate steps. If you like that view, I think that's great, but I would disable the QC tab because you just don't need that in a single station installation. The big upside to using this setting is that you can scan numerous batches in a row before you do any indexing, then index all your batches in a row with the next one coming up automatically. It's a good way to go, but I'm staying with scan and index. Okay, that's it for the administrator tool. I will save my settings and close it. Next, a quick little tweak. In this side panel that holds the document profiles, I want to change the sort order. At the top of the panel, I'll change the sort parameter to name, and I want regular alphabetical order, like this. Now then, these built-in sample profiles are usable for testing and cloning, but I'll make a new document profile to suit myself. I'll drop down this menu again, 
for configure profiles and then click the little plus sign at the top of the side panel. Under configure profiles, I'll work through a series of screens selected from the panel on the left. I'm on this name screen to start. I'll be scanning some invoices, so I'll name my new document profile One Invoices. The one is just so it sorts to the top of the profiles list. And I'll double click whichever icon I like. This one, because I'm going to scan in black and white. And now the source tab. My scanner is turned on and attached to a USB port, so it's waiting for me there. You might need to drop down and select. Now, this next part is important. You really need to do this. Make a scanner driver profile. You see, a scanner driver profile is part of a document profile. The reason I'm seeing this particular one right now is that a few minutes ago I ran a test scan using the auto color document profile. So its scanner driver profile is waiting for me here. And that's fine. I'll start my work on a new scanner driver profile by selecting one that is already set for the color mode I want. That's this one in black and white. See how that gives me a head start up here under source parameters? I'll tweak these parameters a bit. Color mode for black and white is good to go, but there are other choices. I'll scan at 300 dots per inch resolution, always 300. Sing along with me on that, unless you clearly understand why you want something else. I'll select letter size, because that's what I have, and simplex, which means I'll only be scanning one side of the paper. I'll leave continuous scan disabled, and I'll enable after scan correction, even though I won't say anything more about it. Notice the asterisk. It means I have unsaved changes. I need to do a save as for my new scanner driver profile, which I will name the exact same as the document profile, one invoices, because that's intuitive, they're associated. Okay, one more thing about making scanner driver profiles. What if you were seeing this? Let's say that you want to use automatic color sensing. But then you can't set the resolution. See that? Well, you'll need to open PaperStream IP, which is the mother load of configuration for scanner driver profiles. Click Edit here. Then click this double arrow here. And with Basic selected on the left, I make my basic settings on the right. When set for auto color, I need to make a resolution setting for both black and white and color. And guess what, always 300 unless you really know why not. Again, this is PaperStream IP you're looking at. It is robust image processing software that is integrated with Capture Pro. I could do a lot more in here with some advanced settings for image cleanup, but I'll leave it at this for now. To save a profile from this window, I need to first click this Save icon at the top. Choose New or Overwrite. And then I would click OK here and here. But since I don't want to keep any of this right now, I'll click Cancel a couple of times. I'm just doing a quick little show and tell about PaperStream IP is all. But when you're scanning in black and white, you probably won't have to open PaperStream IP. You can make the basic settings you need here under Source Parameters. Okay then, remember that I've already saved the scanner driver profile that I want for invoices, so I'll make sure that it's selected and move on. Next up, I'll skip over destination and come back to it because I need to make some metadata configurations first that I'll use with the destination settings. Underneath the field list, I'll click this Add button twice to add two fields. That's easy, right? Then I'll select New Field 1 and change its name to Invoice Number. I'll leave it as Type Manual Entry. Field 2 gets named Vendor Name,
and I'll set the type as choice list. A choice list gives me a drop down menu to choose from. When I click this setup button, I can type in my vendor names, pressing enter between entries. But easier yet, just paste them in from a spreadsheet or text document. I want to limit the entries to only what's in the choice list, so I won't select to allow an unlisted value. But that can be very useful. You should remember that it's available. And you can see a couple of more checkboxes here that I'm not going to talk about. I'll OK this. So far, so good. Coming along nicely. On this separation tab, I'm not going to make a setting. I'll separate documents manually, you'll see. But let me tell you, separation is the next thing you'll want to figure out or learn about once you've got everything in hand from this course. I have a video available for separation. And now it's time to set the destination, which for this demonstration will be a folder. There's two places to make entries in here. This one is for designating the folder where your files will go, and this one is for naming the files that go in that folder. In this folder field, I'll delete everything first, then click Name Rule and select Browse. Right on the C drive, I'll make a new folder named Scanner Output, and that's just an example for this demonstration. I want you to be clear on the idea that you could put your files anywhere that works for you. A network folder setting might look like this. Now I'll put a backslash at the end of this entry. Drop down again for metadata and select vendor name. The backslash means a folder named for the vendor that I select from that choice list will be created on the fly inside the scanner output folder or recognized if I already have a folder for that vendor. It's a way to organize the scan files automatically into folders. In this field for file naming, I'll delete everything once again, then click Name Rule, the metadata, and pop that out for vendor name. I'll put my cursor after that entry and then do it all again for invoice number. And one more time again for a document counter. You see, with a naming convention like this, the software requires a document counter. And actually, that's a good thing. A document counter lets you avoid overwrites and release errors. And now I'll spend a minute touching up for readability in those file names. I'll put a space between the fields carefully. See how those brackets are? Got to keep those just like that. I could use dashes or underscores between fields instead of a space if I wanted to. And I'll put parentheses around the document counter. I like the way that sets it off among the rest of the file name. Okay, these entries will make file names that look like this. And you know what? When you first start planning for how you'll set up your scanning operation, a good place to begin is with what you want for file and folder names. Then you make metadata fields to implement the plan. Okay, one more thing here. What file type do I want for my scan documents? I'll drop down here for PDF file in this case. And from this options button, I will check the box for convert to searchable PDF. And this statement is true enough, but it's nothing to worry about because you can start another scan while Capture Pro is still rendering files. The software can multitask, so to speak. Well then, I'm done with my new document profile. I'll save and close, and then go back to the scan and index screen where I can see my new document profile at the top of the list. Now it's time to test my work. I have a couple of sample invoices here, two pages each. I'll straighten the sheets nicely and put them face down in my scanner's feed tray. I'll double click the profile over here and the scanner runs.
After that happens, I see thumbnails on the left with a full page view in the middle and the index panel on the right containing those metadata fields that I just made. Notice that it's possible to tell from the thumbnails which one is the first page of a document. I'll click on this thumbnail to double check it in the page view and sure enough it's the first page of the second invoice in my batch. So I'll right click that thumbnail for split doc. And one document separates into two with the page I right clicked being the first page of the second document. This is an easy method for document separation that doesn't require any configuration. You just look them over and do it. Next, I'll click on the first thumbnail and then index the documents, which can also be referred to as tagging the documents. I'll zoom in a bit so I can read the invoice number easily and make the entry. And then I'll select the vendor name from the choice list and that's all for the first document, so I'll click this little double arrow up here to move to the next one and then repeat the process. Enter the invoice number, choose the vendor from the drop-down list. So why am I doing this again? Because these metadata entries will name my files and also name the folders they go into. I'll click Complete Batch and then let them process for a little bit and now I'm ready to scan some more, if I wanted to. Instead, I'm about ready to wrap this course up. But one more thing, I'll look at what I've accomplished. Here's that scanner output folder I set as part of the destination. Inside of it are folders named for vendors, and inside those folders are files named with the vendor name and the invoice number, taken from those metadata fields, with a nice document counter too. And those files are searchable PDFs. A regular Windows search can find the one you're looking for based on the file name or even by searching through the contents of the documents. After just a few hours of scanning, you can have dozens of folders holding hundreds of files, all nicely stored for easy retrieval. All right then, that's all for this course. Thanks for watching.